All right, let's start with number three here. And um, according to the, the way the book wants us to respect order of operations, uh, they're saying do addition and subtraction equally. Neither one takes precedence over the other. We just work it from left to right. Um, so 13 minus 8 is, um, is going to be 5, plus 3 is going to be 8. Okay, so simple as that. Number 4, 8 minus 2 squared. So I always like to think about the guy or the girl or whatever who wrote this problem and what they're trying to get you to learn. Uh, and they're trying to get you to see here that exponents would come before subtraction. Um, you don't really need to be told that. Um, if I wanted you to include this 8 in the um, in the exponent, I would need to use parentheses. There are no parentheses. 2 squared is what I want. I want two factors of 2, and I want you to subtract the result of that from 8. 8 minus 2 squared is 4, so this is 4. Um, so, yeah, I, the sort of operations thing is just, you know, it's been used for lots and lots of years, and so we teach it, but it should be pretty clear that I just want two factors of 2 here, and then I want you to put those together, and I want you to subtract uh, that from 8. Um, uh, number 8, 1 plus 5 squared uh, divided by 50. Okay. Um, well, should I divide 5 by 50 and then square that? Um, well, no, because this, this isn't really just 5. This is actually two factors of 5 multiplied together. So uh, we should write what that is. Right? See how the order of operations, PEMDAS or whatever, uh, it is, it's not really necessary. I, I can't divide this by 50 because what this is is two factors of 5, not just one factor of 5. Um, so I need to show that. I need to show what that actually is. Then divide this by 50. Um, uh, so now the, the order of operations tells us that multiplication and division are of higher precedence than... Uh, then addition, so we're going to do this first. That's going to be 1 plus 25 divided by 50. That's going to be a half. Okay, so it's going to be 1 and a half, or I prefer to write 3 halves. Okay. Uh, 18. 8 times, I guess I should use a bracket like they do, 20 minus... 9 minus 5 squared. Okay. Um, so we'll go through it exactly as the order of operations tells us we need to do. Um, so first we have uh, parentheses. So this parentheses um, is 9 minus 5, so we're going to do that first. 9 minus 5 is 4. I'm going to square that. Okay. So now there's really no need for me to have written these parentheses here. The only thing in there is 4. There's nothing to do. It's just 4. So 4 squared. Um, so I guess let's not write parentheses there. Okay. So um, then it says parentheses, right? There's still parentheses, some kind of grouping. Uh, so parentheses first. But I can't do this parentheses until I do this exponent here. Uh, and already I kind of hate myself for talking that way because it just makes it sound like there's some rule that you have to follow. Um, it's not about that. It's about there's these operators and I want to do them uh, in a way that makes sense. Uh, anyway, then we need to have parentheses here. 8 times parentheses 20 minus 16 is 4. So 8 times 4 is 32. And there you go. There's your, quote, right answer. Um, but there's just... There's so many ways to do this, even with respect to the order of operations, uh, that are still correct. Um, I don't have to do these parentheses first. I could um, distribute this 8 first. 8 times 20, right? But I also have to distribute this, so it's also minus 8 times 9 minus 5 
squared. Um, this isn't the way that I'd prefer to do it because it, it's just more complicated, but you, you could do, let's see, 8 times 20 is going to be 160 minus, and I could just you know, multiply these two factors together. Right? This just means two factors of this, so we could just do 9 minus 5 times 9 minus 5. Uh, we could multiply this 8, distribute it through there, so we could do that. Uh, 72 minus 40, okay, so I just multiply this together. This is still grouped together. I could multiply this by 9 minus 5. Uh, I could um, you know, subtract these together first. 72 minus 40 is going to be 32. 9 minus 5 is 4, 160 minus, do the 32 times 4 is going to be uh, 100 and, it doesn't seem right, I'm just going to double check this. One twenty eight and one sixty minus one twenty eight is thirty two, and so you get the same answer. So my point in this is that you're not going to get the wrong answer if you do it in the quote wrong order. Um, I multiplied before I did the parentheses. Uh, sounds like a you know a violation of the order of operations, but it's not. I I respected what the operation was telling me to do. I respected what multiplication was telling me to do, not what PEMDAS was telling me to do. So um, that was just a little mini rant, and I, I just want you to continue to think for yourselves. Um, okay, so now we're going to move on to 23. 2 plus 3x squared. And we're going to evaluate this expression. This is stuff from 1.1 coming back uh, into this section. When x is equal to 3. So we have th 2 plus 3 times 3 squared. I'm just replacing this x with a 3. Uh, so, and, and understand that this 3 and this x are not uh, necessarily tied together. There's no parentheses around them. Right? You've got 3 times uh, a number raised to the second power. So we actually have two factors of this x, two factors of 3. So 2 plus 3 times 3 squared is 9. 2 plus 3 times 9 is 27. And so we get 29. Um, 30. So whoever wrote this down was being very specific in what they wanted, that they want this quantity divided by this quantity. They were very specific about that. Um, and they want to know what this would equal when b is 3. So we got 3 to the third minus 21 over 5 times 3 plus 9. Okay, so if we were to just strictly follow the order of operations, it's telling us 3 to the third first. That's exponents first. It's 27 minus 21 over... Uh, we've got multiplication here, addition here. Multiplication would come first. Uh, 5 times 3 would be 15, plus 9. 27 minus 21 is 6, over 15 plus 9 would be 24. And 6 divided by 24 would simplify to 1 fourth. Okay. Um, so we're really just doing uh, what the... The writer of that problem wants us to do in the order that they were trying to communicate to us. They wanted it done. Um, I'm going to do one last one, a word problem, and uh, I'll also kind of rant about word problems in math textbooks. Um, I might ask you a question, a math question, um, and you may know how to work your way all the way through it, and you may not. Uh, so if you didn't, I would want to give you some help, right? So here's the thing that I don't like. Uh, and it just, it really just comes because it's a text book. It's all written down. And so we kind of get stuck. Let me show you what I mean. So it says you join an online music service, the total cost in dollars of downloading three singles at 99 cents and 
uh, two albums at nine ninety five each. Um, you know, we, we want to find the, the total cost of uh, of buying this music, right? Question A wants us to find the total cost of of this purchase. Well, what did we do? We bought three uh, songs at ninety nine cents. Three songs at ninety nine cents. We bought two entire CDs, two albums at nine ninety five. Okay, so I should be able to just tell you that, and you, you find the answer, right? Um, I think most of you wouldn't have any trouble with this. Um, what we want to do, though, is, is make sure it gets written down in a mathematical expression. Um, so if you got confused by that and you say, I'm not sure how to do that, I would help you through it. But the person in the book who wrote, wrote this question down in words doesn't have a way to kind of hide that part of it and then help you reveal it. They just have to say the total cost is given by this expression and just write it down. Uh, so that's the, the, my little mini rant about that. Uh, it's frustrating. You know, it takes the thought out of it. You don't have to think about it too much. But anyway, we have three songs, and each of them costs 99 cents. So we have three groups of 99 cents. That's a multiplication. We're going to multiply three times 99 cents, or $0.99. Dollars. Um, we're also going to, more than that, right, we're going to add on to that uh, two groups of $9.95, $9.95, $9.95. Uh, and the total amount that we spent would just be this. We would add these two things together. Um, but just by writing it down, we um, have made the order clear. I'm going to take this amount, add it to this amount. So I need to find out what this amount is, which means I need to multiply these together first. Uh, so 3 times 99 cents is going to be uh, 297. Uh, 2 times 995, so that I don't think for too long on camera here, is 1990. So we add those two together and we get 2287. Right, so the total cost is $22.87. Part B, uh, you have $25 to spend. How much will you have left? Uh, so you had $25. You have $22.87 less than that now because you've spent it. So $2.13. You may hear me typing on my calculator. Uh, being a, a good mathematician is not about uh, doing arithmetic quickly in your head. Uh, I often get asked, you know, what's what's this times that, or what's this plus this, or this minus that other thing, and I don't know right away. And people say, "Aren't you a math teacher?" And uh, that drives me crazy because uh, doing arithmetic quickly in your head doesn't really have anything to do with whether or not you're good at math. Math is about thinking uh, critically and thinking for yourself and thinking through a problem, not uh, quickly doing the calculations that are pretty insignificant. So feel free to do that simple stuff. As long as you understand what you're doing, uh, You know, go ahead and save some time with your calculator. Uh, anyway, that's the last one from 1.2. Thanks for watching, and uh, I hope that was helpful.